I remember the day I accepted my call to ministry. I was sitting in my apartment wondering why I was feeling so unfulfilled with life. And then something told me to pick up the phone and call SMU and inquire about seminary. I have never regretted that phone call. However, sometimes I ask myself if I should be under the care of a psychiatrist. But that thought soon dissipates because for some strange reason when that thought pops into my head, the phone rings or I receive a text message and then I suddenly realize why I accepted that call to ministry and I am eternally grateful for that opportunity. Many of you have answered your call from God. That was probably the call that helps you understand your vocation in life. Whether you're a school teacher or a farmer, factory worker, medical professional, parent, grandparent, we've all answered the call when it came. In addition to, answer, in addition to answering the call from God about your chosen vocation in life, there are other calls that God transmits all the time. And for some of us, we find it easier to neglect these calls than to answer them. And to be totally honest, in hindsight, I believe I neglected to answer my call to ministry for years. But when I finally picked up the phone, it was probably the best decision I've ever made in my life. So that's what we're going to talk about today, answering our call from God. Today's scripture lesson is about a young man by the name of Samuel. He heard his name called. He didn't know who it was, so he kept bugging the priest, the elder priest named Eli. And finally, Eli realized it's probably God calling because it wasn't him. So he sent the young man Samuel back into his room. And you know the end of the story. Samuel answered his call and became one of God's prophets. The problem for us regarding the call from God is usually uncertainty. It's not that we're unwilling to answer the call. Sometimes we're not sure if it's our spiritual mobile phone that's actually ringing. And even if it is, how can we be certain that the voice we're hearing is really the voice of God rather than some just idea that popped into our head out of nowhere? Well, here's an example. Consider the case of E. Stanley Jones. He was a Christian missionary in India for years. When he was 23 years old, his college president came to him and asked him to teach at the college. The president said, it's the will of the student body. That's one. It's the will of the townspeople. It's the will of the factory. And it's also the faculty. The fac faculty. And it's also the will of God that you teach in the college. At the same time, a friend wrote to him and said, I believe it's the will of God that you become an evangelist here in America. During the same time period, Mr. Jones received a letter from his denomination's board that said, it's our will to send you to India. All this wasn't enough. He suspected that God's will for him was to be a missionary in Africa. Mr. Jones described this as a traffic jam of wills in his life. But in the end, after much prayer, he eventually became convinced that being a missionary in India was his true calling, and he ministered faithfully in India until his death. But at that time of the competing calls, he had no foolproof way to be sure of which, if any, was God's voice calling him. So what did he do? He relied on prayer, and soon the answer came to him. So how can we tell when God is calling it's not like we have a photo of God that appears on our smartphone that tells it's God's calling. In the Gospel of John, the disciples could see God in the form of Jesus calling them. And wouldn't it be nice if that happened? It would take away, if any doubt, if Jesus just walked in the door and handed out a list of instructions. It sure would make life easier for us. But we're not that fortunate, are we? So I believe the best way to know if God is calling you to a certain task is simply to start the task. In other words, start doing what you think God is calling you to do. If God is calling you to get your teaching certificate and teach school, 
simply begin the process. If you find this process enjoyable and fulfilling, well, you probably made the right choice. However, if you find the process troublesome and annoying, perhaps you've misunderstood, but God's call is in your life. This would probably be a good time to reevaluate the different aspects of teaching. Maybe you missed something. If so, start again with a different goal in mind. Think about it this way. Starting is always a sign of hope and faith on our part. Making a beginning is a statement of belief, or at least hope for a good outcome. And when we sense God calling us to make a new beginning, and whatever that new beginning may be, it's important not to let naysayers or distractions convince you not to follow your calling or your passion. I mean, think about it. How many times have you wanted to start something in your life and you let somebody talk you out of it just because they didn't think it was a good idea for you? I'm guessing it was probably because it, they didn't think it was a good idea for them. Remember, nothing ever gets finished that doesn't get started. Even God takes this kind of initiative to begin. If God didn't, his creation wouldn't exist at all. Remember, the Bible begins, in the beginning, God created. And rest assured that God will never call you to something and then abandon you. God is present with you always and everywhere in everything that you do. So what is God calling you to start? What is God calling you to start in your life today? Whatever God is calling you to do, I guarantee you there is a reason for it. You may not know what the reason is now, but the only way to understand what that reason is is to start. Have you ever wanted to do something in your life, but for whatever reason, you just never tried it? God keeps putting that opportunity in your way, but you just keep either tripping over it or ignoring it? Is it possible God is calling you to get trained in something new in your life? Have you always wanted to learn to fly fish or crochet a hat? Have you ever thought of volunteering at the hospital, but you just never got around to it? Have you ever wanted, always wanted to travel, but for some reason life kept getting in the way? Or are there discouragers or distractions that keep putting that little, that little voice in your ear saying, Don't do it. It's too scary. Whatever the call may be, God has a purpose, and I guarantee that part of that call will be helping someone in the process. You will get to make a positive impact in somebody's life in addition to your own. Well, I have an idea for us all. Let's start by answering a very easy call from God. How about we answer God's call to begin the walk of faith today? I'll be honest with you, one of the most difficult aspects of Christianity is having faith. But to have faith, we must make a conscious decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God. And that means giving up some control in our lives. And we all hate giving up control, don't we? It happens to everybody. But trusting in God and trusting that God knows more about life than we do is a great step in the right direction. And by having faith and trusting God, you've just accepted one of your calls from God, haven't you? It's just that easy. That's an easy first step. So now you've accepted the call from God to be faithful to Him. The next step is to test it. Test means action on our part. Now let me be clear. I'm not telling you to test God. We don't do that. But I am telling you to put yourself to the test. So how do you test your faith in God? Well, an easy way to start is to follow the commandments from Christ. Remember, he narrowed it down to two for us. Have no other God before God and treat your neighbor as yourself. And here is an example of a simple test. If you find yourself loving the acquisition and storehouse of money 
above all else in your life, then you are failing the test of faithfulness because you have put the love of money ahead of the love of God. However, if you love God and you're grateful for the money that you have and thank Him every day for the ability to earn money or the ability to save the money you have, you're passing the test. You have placed God first in your life ahead of money. Or if I dislike someone simply for the color of their skin or their country of origin without getting to know them as a person, I am now failing the test of faithfulness. I have not answered the call from God to be faithful to Him. On the other hand, if I take the time to get to know someone, take the time to find out what their goals are in life, find out what's important to them, and take time to understand if there is goodness or evil in their heart, now I'm passing the test of faithfulness. You're trusting that God knows more than you do about that person. By doing these simple things, you are taking the first step in trusting and answering His call to be faithful. But what if we all answered God to be called to be faithful? What would our world look like? Would these endless wars cease? Would the terrorist attacks end? Would we stop judging each other just because they don't look like us or they weren't born in America? Would our world leaders stop arguing and start finding ways to live in peace? Now here's a news flash for the world leaders. I hate to tell them this, but most people in their countries want to live in peace with one another. It's the leaders that start the wars that the young men and women have to fight in. Brothers and sisters, those little thoughts that pop into your head from time to time can be God calling you to do something new in your life. Remember, the first step is to start. The second step is to test it. And finally, Evaluate that test to make sure you're on the right path. And yet, if you're still confused as what to do, remember the man in our story that had people telling him that God was calling him in four different directions. What did he do to solve the problem? He prayed about it, and the answer came to him. So if you haven't answered God's call to be faithful to him and to trust in Jesus, here's an idea. Stop procrastinating, start praying, and then answer the phone. And I guarantee you, your life will never be the same again. Amen.